Hello everyone, this is Revealing Light Tarot. Um, commiserations at this point are in relation to the Kavanaugh vote. Um, I woke up this morning, you know, very disheartened in Susan Collins because uh, I guess because she's a female we expected more from her, um, which is, you know, kind of illogical really, isn't it? Uh, she's a Republican and like Jeff Flake, they, they will most likely... Um, vote along um, uh, party lines, um, but full marks to Murkowski. Mm? Yeah, she she did a very brave thing. So within this, what appears to be a dark situation at the moment, there's always there's always the light, and I guess where we put our focus is where we see the light and we grow the light, or we, you know, get consumed by the darkness. So what I did this morning as I was disheartened, I went out and bought a new, <laughs> a new tarot deck. Some people buy chocolate, well, I bought the tarot deck. Um, the Arcanum deck, um, I don't know much about it other than um, that the artists that do most of the beautiful artwork you see on uh, tarot cards, Low Scarabio artists, uh, did this artwork here. Um, and they're dedicated to preserving the traditional images and meanings of the tarot in their artwork. So this has some links with my other decks. Um, my Aquarian deck and uh, my Raider White deck and my Celtic deck. I'm also uh, wanting to uh, have a look at some of the older decks as well. So, but that's in the months ahead. Uh, for the moment, we, we'll work with these with these decks. Um, so, I thought I'll bring a new deck to this situation. Uh, and the two things I want to look at today is why Susan Collins voted the way she did, what were the things that influenced her vote, um, and if Kavanaugh is, um, is confirmed uh, and his nomination proceeds through and he, is succeed, he succeeds, I have to say that I'm quite, dis, uh, again, disheartened. I, I shouldn't say disheartened. I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I guess, wondering about the process that, that with such an important seat like a SCOTUS, um, why, it, it, why you can actually, uh, you know, put it through just on a 50-50. I would have thought that the filibuster um, there, the 60 votes, should, should be mandatory and not something that can be broken not on the Supreme Court uh, nomination, but um, that's just, yeah, that's just the way it is. Um, it's interesting in Australia, uh, the way our Supreme Court judges are chosen, they're chosen on the basis of their the sheer weight of their their legal experience and the breadth of it. And they're vetted, they're vetted on along legal lines rather than rather than political lines. Um, that's not saying that that hasn't t been taken into account, but by far and away the uh, the things that influence us all in Australia are, uh, are the, legal, the legal capacity, the legal talent, the legal... No, it's not even talent. It's, it's capacity and experience. They're the base, seems to be the basis on how we choose our, uh, our Supreme Court uh, judges. Um, but... Um, uh, we don't have these partisan come through the Senate, the, the the Senate kind of things. We don't we don't we don't have that in Australia in our Parliament. So, um, just having said all that, uh, let's just go back to the new tarot deck, fresh some fresh energy, bringing to bear. Oh, look, the Ace of Wands, which is exactly that, fresh inspiration and fresh. Cr fresh creativity so you know let's have a focus on the light the light that we can generate rather than being um sucked back into that darkness um i've zero tolerance today for trolls as soon as i see them they go um and i would urge also um um i would urge people not to go on to right-wing sites if it's going to upset them um I don't. I don't know about you, but uh, I. I don't go on to in Australia. I don't go on to right wing sites. Um, you know, I'm probably uh, a, a progressive or liberal, the equivalent. But I'm also an independent. But I definitely am not a a, a far right wing um, 
I have no sympathy with right wing, far right wing fanaticism. I really don't, and I and I don't really tolerate it. So, but anyway, we're getting off the subject. Um, I watched Susan Collins's what I could of her speech, although I, to be honest, I couldn't really go too far. Um, I was just so dis disappointed. Um, so, um, and of course, we should mention Joe Manchin as well. Uh, you know, if, if we had a Labor Party person, or well, our Labor is your equivalent to your Democrats, if they crossed the floor on something as serious as this, they would be expelled from the party and expected to become an independent. But anyway, uh, all those things are outside my, um, my purview. Let's just have a look at the tarot cards again, which are, are a guide, a guide only, um, and we bring all of our intuition to bear on it, okay? And we see what, how it can enlighten us, particularly in dark times. So, Susan Collins, why did she, why did she vote the way she did? Okay, let's see. Okay, the magician. Um, you know that's bringing um, the the unconscious into the into the conscious, but it's also uh, can be associated with tricks, the trickster. Um, now it could be that there's been some uh, there's been quite a lot of pressure on her, um, and you know because she her vote then turned. Uh, the vision to get Kavner on the Supreme Court into reality. So it seems to be that there was probably quite a lot of pressure on her to begin with and there could be some tricks. So let's have a think about leverage. I mean, we know that, that all sorts of things have, has, have occurred here. Kavner texted uh, people that may have been potential witnesses um, or, you know, allegedly he did. Um, the Senate rang, uh, rang witnesses and suggested they may have been mistaken. So we've really got some, you know, some really outlandish things in this process. So it could be that there's been... I'm not saying she's been blackmailed. That card doesn't say that. But there could be some fairly, you know... Um, pressure brought on her uh, to vote the way she did. And to me, it's along Republican lines. She voted according a, 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 along Republican lines and not, I don't think, essentially to for her um, uh, her conscience. Um, so the, the Ten of Swords is probably one of the worst uh, you can cards you can draw um, and this is in the position of her challenges and her challenges then of course are um, uh, you know really she's out of her depth uh, she's totally stressed out by this and she's out of her depth now that would fit with the magician card you know this this kind of tricks and um, working their magic if you like uh, to bring pressure upon her um, and it's really this whole situation is, you know, she's really, she's, you know, going to have to have some, it could mean that she could get ill over it, that this pressure that it's put on her. Um, we haven't got the final vote yet. We've got, we've actually got to wait for that. So let's not skip too far ahead. I know it's a day ahead now. Uh, I know the voting on Saturday, um, uh, but let's not go beyond what we already know today. Um, and the focus of the situation, hope. The focus of the situation is hope. That's an interesting, that's an interesting card to have drawn here. The focus of the situation is hope. So either hope will be given or hope will be taken away. Um, but that's very much what's at stake with this nomination. It's hope. It's hope that justice will be done. It's hope that the, th the Supreme Court will 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 you know not be stacked with you know partisan um, people, um, and that, that that it will be you know it's hope that the highest court in the land will be above reproach, and we know that we've had we've had those political nominations and processes before with Clarence Thomas. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but. Um, so let's have a look at what's in the past. The Knight of Cups. Okay, so for Susan Collins, this is suggesting a proposal of some description. 
That's interesting. There's been a proposal put to her. Wow. Gosh, okay. Um, all right. We'll just keep going. I'll just get rid of these cards. Um, you know, and what is the, the, the strength of this situation? Well, the Six of Cups is like nostalgia and, and innocence and... You know, here we've got these two children. As I said, this is a new deck to me, but there's very much about, you know, the innocence emotions. So to me that's saying all of that is at jeopardy because that's up, up in the sky and this is down below. So we've got innocence uh, riding on this, and not you know, nostalgia going back to better times. We've got that and then we've got hope as well, Um uh, being the, the focus of the situation and then in the past some sort of proposal that was given or made to Susan Collins. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Now the aid of... This is the future for uh, Susan Collins um, because we asked what what um, influences, why did she do what she did and what, what influences were brought to bear and the aid of swords is... Um, it's, you know, it's, all, it's, it's restriction and isolation and... Um, and, you know, can be self-imposed as well, which would fit with this card of, you know, of stress and, um, you know, exhaustion and uh, that's her challenge. Um, yeah, the Eight of Swords, wow. Um, yeah, she's, got, she's going to be restricted and isolated in some way because of, because of these, this, this decision. Um, It seems to me we asked the central question was why um, why she did what she did, what influences were brought to bear. It seems like there was some sort of incredible pressure put on her along party lines. There was some proposal put to her. Who knows what that would be? Uh, you wouldn't know in this regime. I mean, look at Lin what Lindsey Graham did. He flicked for, um, you know, obviously for... Um, you know, well, it's alleged the position of, you know, leading the Judiciary Committee, leading... So it's power. It's power that they, they flip for. I'm not saying that's the case here with Collins, but there appears in this reading some kind of... Well, it's actually an emotional proposal. Um, it's got, you know, I'm not seeing money or, or power. I'm th seeing the tricksters, the tricksters here... Those that we know uh, are quite happy to, you know, to uh, put forward a shambolic process. This, this, because it's the cups, it's an emotional proposal. Um, so it could be that they've said, you know, we'll, if you don't vote this way, we'll, you know, you know, we, you, you, you know, you, I don't know. There's been some kind of appeal to her emotions there to influence the way she's the way she's um, she's voted and um, it you know what's riding on this is hope and uh, and you know that the, that we will have a time where you know before all these tricks and and illusions and um, uh, flawed processes before all of that. Um, that's what's riding on this, and uh, and you know it it probably is indicating that at some level she knows this too. She knows this because this is a pretty pretty drastic reaction that's going to come from this. And look, you know, that's so. Anyway, that's Susan Collins. Um, so I might. Um, I might close down this reading and then open up a new reading. Uh, I'll get rid of the... I'll shuffle the cards and, um, you know, clear them with some, some essences and um, we'll then look at if Kavanagh is confirmed, then what does that mean then for the midterms? And I also want to uh, tell you about a graph that I saw that I've come across which is quite inspiring as to what it might mean for the midterms. Okay, so I'm going to close this one down. Um, uh, this is, I've used the Arcanum deck, uh, which has been illustrated by Lo Scar Scarabio and um, foremost tarot artists um, in the world. 
and uh, follows the Rider Waite, which is our main tarot deck, pretty closely. Um, and that was the reading on Susan Collins. We'll close this down now and we'll open up something else. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone.